welcome to another Sinead Says podcast. This is episode seven. This is my first ever solo podcast. Like I have been avoiding it like the plague. I just been so nervous, like my heart is beating and I've avoided it now for like two days. I usually record my podcasts, you know, on the same day every week, but I have just been avoiding it. I don't know why. No, I know why. Because this makes me nervous. Because I don't have anyone to bounce off. But I thought I'll throw myself in the deep end and I will just do, I'm planning on a short podcast because I feel like I will be short because nobody's like bouncing with me here. So um, today I just wanted to quickly talk about something that really helped me. Um, When I became more conscious of my behavior, I realized that I wasn't in control of my emotions. My emotions were in control of me. I just thought my emotions and my thoughts were me and I didn't realize that I could actually take control and what I realized was that emotions are signals. Like they are signals from within your brain, your body. They're a call to action. When you are feeling a certain way, that emotion that arises, may, may it be anger, may it be guilt, that is a sign that something needs to be done and something isn't aligning with you. And your body and your emotions are telling you. So... I've read plenty of books on emotions like it's something that I'm very very passionate about it is something that I'm dying to get into schools just to learn about these emotions and I know they are doing a lot of work at the minute so um thank you to everyone working on emotional mastery in schools but um I would say like the most useful book for me was probably the first book I ever read about emotions and this was Tony Robbins Awaken the Giant Within and he had a six steps to emotional mastery so this is sort of where this is stemming from just to give you a little insight. So the first step is really just recognizing and identifying the emotion because we are so used to, you know, when things happen and situations come forward and um, maybe somebody verbally attacks you, maybe you feel attacked and we then act out in anger. The emotion is anger. If we step back and we say, am I angry right now or am I actually hurt? Am I hurt Or am I disappointed? Figuring it out, first of all, is the step that we need because it sort of takes away the intensity of it. Because say, for example, you see something in your boyfriend's phone or the next thing you're throwing a bloody shoe at him because, you know, we've all been there. Um, (laughs) One time I actually threw my boyfriend's, this isn't my boyfriend now, this is like an ex-boyfriend. This is the time I, I, before I read all the books, guys, I actually, um, I think I made a read a text or something, I don't know, but I threw all his clothes out the window when I was living in Magaliff and then I think somebody stole, came and stole them. So um, if I would have stepped back and been like, am I angry or am I actually like hurt? And it's true, I'm hurting. And then once we get that emotion of hurt and disappointment, then we can we can move forward and get the solution which we'll talk about later but yeah the step one is just identifying the emotion the next step is to acknowledge and appreciate your emotions and knowing that they are supporting you I think in my old days back in the days I used to think oh my god I shouldn't be feeling sad I shouldn't be feeling anxious right now and I would make myself feel like they are wrong emotions when in fact they have arisen in me for a reason like if I'm anxious because maybe I'm not living up to my full potential like that emotion has arisen in my body and in my emotion to tell me like come on let's take some action now you know your actions are not aligning with your goals so don't think anything is wrong here what you got to realize is that all emotions are here for a reason and we must appreciate them and thank thank them for coming into our lives because without that emotion we wouldn't have any call to action and saying that they're wrong just doesn't do anything for us at all so and I example of this the emotion anxiety is seen so negative but without anxiety we wouldn't get up in the morning when you wake up in the morning you're like oh I better get up because I need to do this like that's a sense of anxiety and it tells you to get up and go and get at it so we appreciate anxiety we appreciate that feeling and then it's not our enemy then Step three is get curious about the message the emotion is bringing. In the book, he talks about loneliness. You know, when you feel lonely, question that. Am I actually lonely? Do I have friends around me? Maybe I just need to take action and connect with these people and ask them to do something. In that case, you know, the the emotion lonely is brought up for a reason because it's telling you, you need more connection. You need that level. And this was something for me, I definitely needed, um, when I read this book, I knew that I was, I felt lonely, but I wasn't taking any action. So I then reached out to more and more people. And yeah, so 
that's get that's step three and um, then step four and step five kind of like for me like they intertwined into one so basically it's about getting confident knowing that you've handled this emotion before so if you felt anxious if you felt um lonely know that you felt this before and you overcame it but then you need to actually jot down the things that made you overcome these emotions and then they will be remembered and programmed into your brain so that when you feel that emotion again that emotion is not in control of you you're in control of it and you can bring out your tools to deal with each emotion which we can go through soon but yeah those those steps kind of go into one and and then step six is basically just getting excited to take action because we now know how to handle this emotion and I just want to say that mastering your emotions is how you master life and become successful because when you have your emotions under control it's like you can take on the world you can go into any boardroom you can deal with any situation because you know what can arise and what can bring you back down to your level so step six is just getting excited so you can go through the steps and realize that you identified the ocean the ocean (laughs) the emotion you appreciated the emotion Instead of fighting it, you got curious and now you're getting excited. So you get excited and you take action. And this is the the bit that I really love. So this is the action signals and like how we're going to take action on each emotion. And I'm going to go through each emotion now. Um, Well, some of the emotions that I definitely think that I needed guidance on. And he talks about kill the monster while it's little. So before your emotions take over your brain, before the negative emotions and negative thoughts take over your brain, you can get it while it's small and take it out put it to the front of your brain deal with it and be gone and like come back to a good emotional state so in the book he goes through like 10 different emotions I'm not going to go through the 10 because I want you to read the book and I think like if you want to know more about this this is a really good book for you um it'll help you take control but I think I'm just going to talk about the ones that really, really stood out for me. And one of them that really stood out for me is the emotion guilt. Um, the emotion of guilt is something that we try to avoid. And because it is really painful for us as humans to feel guilty. But it's so, so useful. Guilt for me is one of the useful, most useful emotions because it, again, strikes action in you. If you didn't have guilt, you would keep repeating and repeating the same the same cycle. And guilt tells you that you violated one of your highest standards and that you must do something immediately to ensure that you're not going to violate that standard again in the future that feeling of guilt will make you not want to do it the next time as well and um, it is really designed to give us a drive of action to create a change and it's to avoid the behaviors in the future so if you think about the feeling of guilt and you realize what brought you guilt then it's that uncomfortable that you don't want to feel that again and you must also realize that the feeling of guilt means that you have violated your standard your own personal standard made you feel like that some people don't even have that standard that's why you know the people that keep doing bad things and bad things they do not have that standard of they just don't have that standard for themselves so they keep doing those things so be blessed that we have that standard for ourselves and we feel the emotion guilt because that shows that we actually are a good person and so don't feel guilty for feeling guilt and now it's your time to change and the solution about it would be is acknowledge that you have in fact violated the critical standard you hold for yourself and absolutely commit yourself to try and not do this again and you know what we might do it again because we're humans but once again you feel that guilt um I even say this like you know like after Christmas and everyone feels really guilty after eating all the crap but imagine you didn't feel guilty imagine you just didn't care and you didn't have that standard for yourself and you would continue to eat crap so in fact the guilt is what pushes you to a better standard and what pushes you to be a better person so that is why guilt is very very useful and then you know then that guilt has served its purpose to drive you to the the higher standard in the future and you can say bye bye to guilt once you appreciate it and move on another emotion i deal with a lot is the emotion of inadequacy and um, this is when we sort of feel unworthy and we feel like worthless and that we just can't do the task at hand and first of all, we need to realize what is the message that inadequate and uh, uh, inadequacy can never say it. What is the message that it gives? And it just basically means that at this present moment, we do not have the level of skill necessary for the task at hand. So basically, it's telling us that we need more information. We need more understanding. We need more strategies, tools, or just general confidence. A good example of this is when I was writing my book, I thought, well, I'm not a writer. Like I just couldn't get that like limiting belief out of my head and it wasn't that I 
couldn't. It's that I didn't have the appropriate skills. So I kind of sit back and was like, okay, can I can I write? Can I, am I a writer? And I was like, no, I just need more skills. So I went and I did writing courses. I did loads online and um, even simple things because there were so many things I didn't know about writing. It was not something I was interested in school, but now I'm interested because I'm interested in something that I needed to share. Um, so I basically just went and got the skills and you have to think to yourself is this really an appropriate emotion for me to feel in this situation am I actually inadequate or do I need to change my way of perceiving things and it's so true because most of the time it's not that we can't do something it's just that we just need more information about the subject um and this was something that really really helped me with everything everything like when I read this book I was like I was like, oh, I can't do my website, but I can. I can just Google and YouTube everything. So that emotion of inadequacy comes up for a reason. What's it coming up for? It's coming up to tell you don't have the appropriate skills right now. Then what do you do? You take action, you question it and you think, am I actually inadequate? Or do I not have the appropriate skills? And that is exactly what you do. You just go and you get the appropriate skills and that emotion disappears and that it then served its purpose. And that it was why it's there. Another good way of looking at an equity is to find a role model. A role model that has done it before. Because if someone's done it before, it means you can do it. If you model their behaviours and their what they did, then what's stopping you? Like, just find that role model. Even like, anyone. It, it doesn't matter your fail. Just look at them and think, okay, what are they doing? And it will prove to you that you can do it. Like, it's like Siobhan for me. Siobhan proved to me that... I didn't have to like use my degree and do like the normal job my mom, wa- mom and dad wanted to. I could achieve more and I thank her so much for that every day because without seeing her do that, she inspired me and she gave me the not she she let me know that I can do what she's doing. So don't be afraid to get a role model and don't forget that you know we can always self improve. So you're not actually inadequate. You just need more skills. So the next emotion is hurt. I want you to think of a time you've actually been hurt and why because we need to understand when hurt arises so hurt usually arises when we have a sense of loss and it usually means that we have expected something and that expectation has not been met. If you think about it's Valentine's Day right now so for example you would feel hurt if your partner forgot or they just didn't make an effort so you would feel hurt because an expectation that you thought didn't get met. Okay, with this, it brings a sense of loss. Like we lose intimacy with this person. We lose trust in this person. Like this sense of loss then brings on the sense of hurt. And then if we think of the solution to this feeling, I think we all need to realize that in reality, um, we may not have lost anything. Like we may have just had a false perception of the situation. For example, like I could feel really hurt if Jack didn't do anything for Valentine's Day, but Jack just might have grew up that way that Valentine's Day wasn't celebrated. Jack may, his ex might not have wanted all the things that I want and I expect something completely different from him. So in fact, the hurt could be so unnecessary. Um, It's just something that I expected and I think that person's out to hurt me when in fact I've made that perception up in my head and no one is out to hurt me. And like, you know, like your partner's never really out to hurt you. You know for a fact when you wake up in the morning, you're not out to hurt anyone or your partner. So we just have to ask ourselves here, is there really a loss or am I judging the situation wrongly? And if the hurt is still there, then you can communicate. So you communicate and say, like communicate appropriately, say, when you did this, I felt like you didn't care about me. And then they'll be like, oh my God, usually because nobody is out to hurt anyone. Like, I don't know if I'm just being naive, but that's the way you usually feel. And then when you communicate that, they're like, oh my God, I did not understand that that would make you feel like that. And once they've realized that you felt hurt or whatever, they usually will change and you can do it appropriately without feeling hurt. But if you don't get rid of hurt, what comes next? If you don't get that out on the table, what comes next is anger and we all know this guys when we're hurt by partner friends and we don't say anything we don't communicate appropriately then we get angry then we're going to our fucking ma's house and we're like did you see what he did and he never even told me this and she did that and you know what she said to me and then we're angry so then how do we deal with anger for me when I see someone angry I always see someone hurt and I think we should always remember that when anger arises within us it's usually common from hurt and it could be hurt 
from someone breaking your standard or your rules or that it could be your own self that you're angry at because you broke your own standard and your own rules but if you take a step back from anger and just realize that again you could have misinterpreted the situation and another thing is your rules can be completely different to someone else so let's talk about the valentine's day thing again like for me romance is so important but to him it just might not be a standard that he like it's not something that he lives up to and and it comes down again to having different personalities different upbringings and how we are what our own rules are we all know in my book we talk about someone who's anxious in a relationship will probably need like say the boy say jack is a way out and because i'm a bit more anxious because my past relationships only tend to text me and go hey babe i'm going out after work why it's because he's so secure i could just walk on head out go to the bar and say nothing and he'd be grand it's just two different rules and we need to talk about what our rules are and what our standards are it's not that that it's not that I'm being a psycho because I need him to text me I just need that more reassurance just like you know I need a bit I need romance on Valentine's Day but if he doesn't know it and I don't communicate it to him then how the hell's he meant to know so yeah it's just about like you know it's a solution to anger I suppose as well and a question to really ask yourself when you're angry at someone is does this person care about me and if they care about you they usually don't want to hurt you or make you angry so there's obviously like a miscommunication there as we're on the subject of anger um i just want to touch on violence because if we were taught the cycle of anger how to deal with it i think there would be less violence in the world so when you get angry you're angry because you're hurt and you're hurt because your expectations haven't been met. So let's just say, let's just think of like, I don't know, somebody who's violent. If this person was taught what anger was, they'd be able to question it and go, okay, why am I angry? So you're angry because you're hurt and what does hurt mean? Hurt means that an expectation hasn't been met. So then he can question, she or he can question his um, expectations. Okay, do you think, do I expect too much of my wife or husband in this moment um let's just say he's angry at her because she never made the dinner on time and he could sit there and go okay I'm angry because that expectation of my wife is actually probably unrealistic and he would be able to sit back and evaluate that and complete the cycle because you sort of need to complete the cycle of emotions and if you knew what anger was and what even think of like a friend you know like when a friend does something to you and you're really angry at them maybe they didn't come come somewhere maybe they didn't go somewhere and you get really angry at them and you're chatting chat about them behind their back and all this because you're angry. So then you now you, know you can sit and question yourself. Why am I angry? I'm angry because I'm hurt. Because my expectation of this person was not met. Is my expectation of this friend realistic? For example, you know, I'm 28 now. So should I really expect all my friends to come to everything that I tell them to come to? Well, no, because they have their own lives. So maybe I could question my expectations. But like, okay, I shouldn't expect my friends to come to everything that I do so then I could lower my expectations that will make me less hurt that will make me less angry or what I could do is I could go and have a conversation with my friend and say oh I just expected this and that is why I'm hurt so let me know if it's not something that I can expect anymore from you and maybe and you could actually just deal with the anger and deal with the hurt and everyone would get along better if everyone knew this so yeah Next up is fear. So fear can be anything to do with like, you know, anxiety, worry, you know, these emotions come up when we feel fear. So when fear rises in the body, what is the message that this emotion is giving us? So fear is comes up because it's telling us that we need to prepare for an event that is, ha- is going to happen or something that's going to happen. Like, let's say, for example, me going traveling alone. I was so fearful before and I was like absolutely shaking in my boots. Like I couldn't sleep my heart. I had heart palpitations. I was so fearful. And then I was in this fight or flight all the time before I went traveling so the fear coming up is telling me that I need to prepare appropriately so there's me thinking okay so what happens if I lose money what happens if this so I kind of go through and prepare you know if I am anxious I'll go and check that I've packed everything again and then once I have done my checklist of all the things that I should be afraid of and I should need to prepare for then I need to get out of that fight or flight because I've done everything that I need to do to get out of that fear and the emotion has come up for a reason. I've dealt with a reason. And then sometimes we sort of sit around and still be in fear. But once we've already prepared appropriately, we need to just have faith. Have faith that we have done everything we need to do. And then we can let that anxiety go because the motion of fear has done its job. It's came to the surface of my body and my emotions. I have prepared as best way as I can. 
and now I can just let it go. Loneliness, we spoke about it before in the podcast, but I just want to bring it back because when I read this this bit in the book, I was like, oh my God, like it's so simple, but yet I was like eating myself up for feeling lonely. And I kind of felt this whenever I was in Australia. I was in Australia and I just felt so, so lonely. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so lonely. Like as if like there was nothing to be done about it. And when I read this, it made so much sense. Like, you know, the feeling of loneliness comes up because I need connection with people. I need to feel safe in an environment with people. And the solution to loneliness is to realize that you can just reach out. You can just reach out and say, do you want to go for a coffee? If they say no, ask somebody else. There is caring people everywhere that will say yes and want to talk and want to do this and being lonely is not about intimate connection or wanting a boyfriend or wanting that sort of relationship sometimes being lonely is just having a friend having someone to talk to and at that point when I was feeling really lonely I was like right okay just stop I need to stop feeling lonely now because I can reach out and I reached out and a few people said no like to coffees and like things I wanted to do I kept going I'd even made calls to people and I was like oh my god even speaking to that person for like 10 minutes and talking to them made me feel better so I need to like instead of sitting on my phone I was like actually picking it up and being like hey what is the crack rather than just like you know getting the validation from likes and stuff like that like reach out and get a proper intimate connection and you know your loneliness will fade away and that was the most important that was a really good lesson for me that I can just reach out and I hope that if you're feeling lonely that you can reach out as well so this is just a few steps this is a few like this is tip of the iceberg when it comes to emotional intelligence um, there's another book called Emotional Intelligence that will really guide you through all this. And I just think like if we got in touch with our emotions as kids and understood what was going on in our brain, I think there would actually be a lot less addiction in the world. Like there's a, that in that book, Emotional Intelligence, they talk about how not understanding your emotions can lead to addiction because let's just say something something sad happens, something someone makes you angry and when you get to those teenage years and the years that you begin to start drinking and you have all these emotions and then you begin to drink what happens you get numb you numb out all the emotions and that becomes addictive because you don't have to deal with your emotions do you if you numb them out because alcohol does get rid and that's where you have to draw the line if are you going to drink to drown your sorrow then to forget or are you doing it for fun are you doing it for the crack are you doing to let loose how are you using those substances just I really want you to question yourself on that this week and maybe even think about someone who you think uses substance for that reason and think maybe if they knew how to deal with their thoughts emotions they might be able to change as I'm like recording this like me and Jack had to have a talk about Valentine's Day and I just want to tell you the difference between like me last year and me this year so like I was I was just like so annoyed or something but I never said anything I literally said nothing I was like "Mm, I'm hurt but I'm okay and he told me to meet him out for dinner and you know what like I was probably expecting a bit more from him and then I was disappointed and then I didn't say anything so I never got my flowers I was a bit raging went for dinner it was grand and then went out and met the girls and all and like we like we met all the couples but then I started to drink then the hurt turned into anger and then I was like he was kind of like and then I became emotionally distanced with him like that night and I was like you know what I'm just gonna stay out and I'm gonna go to this party blah 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 and then we kind of got into an argument or whatever and then he went home and I stayed out and then I was just like on a mad one like being angry like it wasn't too bad I wasn't angry like crazy but I was just like no I'm gonna keep my emotions to myself I'm not gonna understand them and then I'm just gonna you know go out and get drunk <laughs> like so I went to this house party anyway and then the next day I had to go I was just like oh my god that was actually such a dicky move like maybe he just didn't understand my expectations which is so true like I was expecting too much and and you know what like that's the difference between me last year and me this year so I know that Jack wouldn't have the most romantic streak as in like you know I'm kind of the one that always like I always I'm, I always make a big deal about people's birthdays like I get the balloons I'm like wake up happy birthday and you know I do expect to be made a big deal of sometimes um if it's my turn like I always get disappointed if I don't it's and you know why I've understood that like it's because I make a big deal for somebody else so I sort of want the same in return 
And I kind of know, obviously we're in lockdown as well. And I kind of know that Jack probably hasn't had, doesn't have anything planned. And he doesn't know that I, I'm expecting it. So I actually rang him there about an hour ago. And I was just like, babe, if I kind of need to, like, I'm kind of disappointed that, like, you haven't told me a plan for Valentine's Day. And it's like tomorrow. Um, Like, I could have waited till tomorrow and just got, like, not what I expected and then I would have like been raging so I was kind of like look I don't want to I want to just make you understand that like I kind of expect to like you know you to like tell me a time when we go for dinner or like you know he makes dinner or you know I'm kind of expecting that and the reason why I expect that is because like I kind of do it for you and I always make a big deal I always take us away and I always and I just think this the one day that I would just love to be cherished and he was like, oh my God, I'm, he was, he was, you could tell he was so upset. He's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry that like, I've made, I was a wee bit upset. Like, and he was just like, he's like, oh my God, I didn't, I really, really didn't think that that would upset you. And oh my God, no, 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 I'm going to sort it out, you know? And like, that's the difference because I told him what I expected. And if he couldn't bring it forward to me, at least I wouldn't be disappointed, hurt and angry tomorrow. At least he'd be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I have so much work to do. My head's been fried. Um, so that's sort of, I think that's the difference. Because I really knew that I had to tell him in that moment that that's what I expected. Do I sound like a spoiled bat right now? Because I want like that. But it's, I think it's it's the least. It's the least he can do to, you know, make a dinner for me. Make, make a bit of a fuss for me because I got myself an outfit um and like it just shows the growth from the year before where um it's probably what I learned from that one situation although it didn't turn out to be a massive crazy mess and I just could have dealt with it better and if you're listening to this like think about all the times where you had an argument and reflect and see how you could have made that better by understanding your emotions and understanding how to just deal with it in a better way the next thing I want to talk about is the pleasure plan and I've wrote an email on this before this also came from the exact same book so basically the pleasure plan is all about having a plan in place for when you feel down and obviously recently in lockdown there's a lot of down days so I bring out my pleasure plan and this is basically a list of things between 15 and 20 things that brings you pleasure that it's just the general things that make you happy it could be anything but um, it also makes you be more aware of the things that make you happy and it, then you can jot them down so that whenever you're feeling like shit, you're like, whoa, there's my list. If I want to feel better, there's the list. So I thought I would just read out my list because it might give you some ideas. So listening to music is one of mine, especially 50s music. So if I'm feeling like shit, I'll be like, right, I'll put this music on. I'll get a workout done. I'll clean up, whatever. So watching friends or funny sitcoms, this is something that like brings me giggles. Going out for a walk, reading, talking to friends, nature, cuddles. Sometimes I'll even just go downstairs and just hug mom and dad. Um, organizing my room, writing my goals, organizing a drawer, lighting a candle, running a bath, journaling, working out, meditating, changing my face simply to a smile, fixing up my posture, counting my blessings, learning something new, and the last one's orgasms, but you know, because sex is a pleasure. <laughs> so yeah, like that's the things that make me happy. And if you don't have them sitting in front of you, like it's hard to like, get out of a funk but if you have your pleasure plan and it's sitting there you're like okay I feel like this but I know one of those things on that list and you know what say if you don't want to go out for a walk that's grand but what about listening to a busted album what about listening to like Wesso you know all those you know like there's so many different things that you can choose from and then you're just like you're ready to take action you're ready for any sort of sad days you're like okay I know how to get out of it and if you don't want to get out of it that's fine it's okay to feel like shit but know that that plan is always there as well so now this week um I have a few tasks for you I want you to get your pleasure plan and I also want you to reflect on times where you're angry or times you're lonely and just see what it would be like now that you have this awareness of emotions and just keep practicing the the cycle and the steps to complete the cycle of your emotions and yeah this is my first ever solo podcast I am still like it's Sunday night and it's meant about Monday I usually do this I'm still listening to it over and over again thinking I what I not sound like but <laughs> like it's so hard to listen to your own voice and be like do I make sense 
so yeah thank you so much as well for listening and please subscribe and please give me a review and let me know what you thought of my first solo podcast and that's it for